Hey, welcome to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I have a really cool couple of games to show you tonight. Um, I have a wonderful online friend, Boris Ospasky. <laughs> That's his handle, right? And I've been playing him chess uh, since I got online in our chess club. And Boris is not as self-confident. Don't be offended, Boris. I'm not going to tell any of your dirty secrets that you've told me. <laughs> His chess is really good. He doesn't think so, though. So I'm really glad he's in our club. This is a game that we played, and I want to share this game because it's full of tactics and it's full of blunders from both of us. This is this is chess learning with practice, <laughs> but the tactics in this game is incredible, and I want to show you this game for that reason. And there's another very important lesson that I learned in this game that is critically important for all of us, and I will share that lesson too, because we all experience what I'm about to tell you in chess. I promise none of us are immune from it. So let's get on with this. This lesson, this game has a very important lesson to share besides the fact that if you play the Rui Lopez with Boris, don't talk him through it <laughs> because he plays really good. We have so much fun playing chess online, you guys, with our various club members and all. What we do is we chat while we're playing, and, uh, you know, we, we talk about where we live and what we do and how much fun it is to be where we are and all that stuff. And, uh... So Boris said he's studying the Rui Lopez, and so we're kind of talking in the background, back and forth to each other, and, oh, well, here, no, you, you did that move wrong, let's do a couple of takebacks and retry that. And so that's how we played this game, and it was a lot of fun, because we're actually exploring and learning the game together. Uh, this was a rated game. I wish it would have been casual, but it's okay. Ratings aren't important. What's important is the friendship in life with people and practicing chess together, helping one another learn openings, because Boris said he doesn't know openings very well. Well, I'm no expert at it either, so it's fun to explore it together. That's what we're doing here. Yes? And it's fun. It's very valuable, but there's a very important lesson at the end of this that I want to give to you. I bump my bishop to b4, and e takes d4 was the better move, is what the computer said. After, after the game was over, I put it through a computer, and oh boy, the computer beat the living snot out of me. But that was the better move, so I missed the better move. I played an inaccuracy. Uh, I can't remember if it was an inaccuracy or a mistake. Bishop b4 check. He came to c3. And here, I went to bishop a5. And the computer says I should have brought it back down here to bishop e7. But I wanted to, to keep my pieces out and develop. We're experimenting and playing with the Rui Lopez. And we're having fun bantering back and forth about it. And so he puts the clamp on me. D5. Chunk. Hit the knight. Target. Yeah, target. I am so sick of you guys beating the snot out of me in chess with your dumb philosophy of targets. I can spit. I tell you, ignore the idiot who's been telling you to do that. It just makes you beat him easier. <laughs> yeah, target. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, D6. Boris decided he's going to come at me. He got target conscious, and he couldn't quit shooting, man. <laughs> And I said, well, all right, yeah, that's, you know, that's a little much, that's pushing it. But notice what he did, he gave me central pawns, right? And I'm thinking to myself as I'm playing, I'm going, okay, I played Russian Grandmaster 
uh, games where they actually, not this far down, but up further, they actually like the central double ponds because they control so many central squares. So, is it a weakness or is it a strength? I decided to take Jeremy Simmons' attitude, and I'm going to view these as a strength, and I'm going to play like they are a strength, not a weakness, right? So this is what we're doing here. Boris Castles. Good job, Boris. Castles early, like you said. I came to Queen B6 here. Uh, the computer didn't like that much. It was saying knight take E4. Knight goes to A3. And then bishop to c7 was a better position for me. And I'm not as adept as a computer, so I did the queen b6. My idea is development, get all my pieces activated. Uh, and I noticed at this point that my development is better than Boris's, and yet he's playing the white pieces. And so I thought, okay, keep going, keep going. I've got a better development. I will push up the center and have a very strong center, hopefully, because he's already down a pawn in the center. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, I've got double pawns, but I also have this other pawn. My pawn is off of the C file. So that was my thinking with the queen B6. And then he comes bishop A4. He bumps back to bishop A4. And so I push the, fi uh, the file, the, the pawn, because I'm thinking, okay, double pawns, if he blocks them down here, that would hurt. So the principle of double pawns is eliminate the weakness by advancing them. So that was my thinking at this point. And hitting the pawn, opening up, because I have easier access to put a rook on an open file than he does. He has to move his screen, then put his rook there. And I'm going to fight him for this file. That was... That was why I'm pushing these pawns, I want to open, if I can, and push those pawns. I want to get rid of this pawn and this pawn and get the open files. We both have the bishop pair at this point, so that's not a consideration just yet, but it might be. Well, he went ahead and obliged me. He took the pawn. And I thought, okay, good, good, because knight at E takes the pawn, and now... I can have a strong center. That was my thinking. Central central control. So I'm going to control this center. That's why I was playing the way I was in this particular Rui Lopez. Bad as the computer said we did, we were having a ball. Bishop g5. Blam! This reminds you of the Smithsluff variation in the queen pawn opening somewhat, doesn't it? He always put that bishop up there to g5. Vasily Smyslov. I loved Mikhail Botvinnik's comment on him. You know, he actually qualified for the candidates tournament in the 1970s. I mean, he was an old man. Ooh, I better be careful how I say that because I'm approaching the age when he made it. He was an old man when he got into the candidates when Gary Kasparov was there. <laughs> and, and people asked Botvinnik, they said, uh, you know, Smithsluff against Kasparov, aren't you afraid that Kasparov's just going to absolutely mow over and crush Smithsluff? Botvinnik's comment was absolutely classic. He said, one does not crush Smithsluff. <laughs> so he's playing like Smithsluff, and I thought, all right, all right, I got to take care of this. I got to got to keep this under control. However, look what he missed. B4, and he'd have had my bishop. Drats! Don't cry at this, Boris, but uh, yeah, dude. That was your move. Or at least my knight, if, it, if I would have taken the, uh, the pawn with the knight and kept my bishop. But, yeah. So, so we're both missing stuff, but we're having fun. We're playing. We're practicing the pillars. And we talked about that as we were playing, right? Look what I got. Blam. That was another reason I went to bishop or queen to b6 is because I saw I could get myself a good rook. He missed that one, which was good for me. He went ahead and pulled the knight out. 
and at this point I was thrilled to death because I saw a great tactic and it was because he pulled his knight out I was just kind of looking over everything and I said oh wait a minute this reminds me of a tactic puzzle find the best move for black because I've been working tactics on Lychus so I went ahead took the pawn and did a beautiful knight fork on the queen and the bishop. <laughs> yeah, baby. Ooh, I love that, right? <sighs> Here, unfortunately, Boris did not find the best response. He put his queen to c1. And I missed the best response. The second he put the queen to queen one, all I got was tunnel vision, and all I could see was my queen is hanging. And I'm not fully developed very well at all. I'm coming into here in excursions, and I'm not very well developed, so I better trade the queens. So that's what I did. And that was a complete mistake. Well, not a complete mistake, but that was not the best tactic. On analysis, I forked the queen and the bishop in here if I would have just opened my eyes a little bit further and stopped and slowed down, I would have had the queen fork. Bummer to be me, <laughs> right? But as it was, I took the queen, right? And then he took the queen. And it was at this point that I made another mistake. And yet I did a tactic. I did a great tactic. I was so thrilled. Because tactics with knights come so hard for me. And they are always thrown at me. And I sucker into them. I haven't trained my eye well enough yet. However, I knew I could have the bishop. Now look, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Boris has one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. I have a bishop. I could have been a piece up, but I got greedy, what I considered greedy, and I did a really cool looking knight fork on the king and the rook. So I get to win the exchange. That was my thinking here. He moves. I take. And I've got the exchange. A rook for a knight. So now what I need to do is open up the files and get these rooks active on open files. Because I have two of them and Boris only has one. This was getting me really excited. And I said, okay, it's time to castle. Connect your rooks. Get on the ball here, connect your rooks. So after I castled, he put his knight to c4. I went to bishop b4 because I didn't want to lose my bishop. I'm trying to keep my bishops because the board is fairly open. And I think it was at about this point that Boris also said, you know what, I think I want to hang on to my bishops because the board is open. We were both trying to talk about Silman's imbalances. We were both kind of trying to read the board a little bit and help each other out. It was really kind of a fun, friendly game of, I'll do this, what do you think? No, I think you ought to do that, and so on and so forth. I love playing games with friends because that's the idea. We forgot that it was a rated game. No big deal, though. We're both so low rated, it doesn't take many points off. <laughs> and now, I went to bishop b4, and now his knight takes my central pawn. And that central pawn wasn't hurting anything, and I told him so. I said, how dare you take that poor pawn? He was just out for a stroll, and he laughed. Boris laughed at me in the comments. It's now official on record, Boris. So I went d6, hitting his knight. Here was my thinking. He's going to pull the trigger on this knight, and he probably should have by now. If, in fact, I remember one of the computer moves said the better move was this. But I thought, if I can disconnect these two knights, then I think I can get rid of one of them. 
right? So I pushed the the pawn and he came to d3 and at this point I went back to bishop a5 because he's hitting my bishop again and I want to keep my bishop in an open field. Now he went to bishop f4 and I believe the computer told him he should have done this. He should have hit my bishop. But he didn't, so he came to f4. He is trying to hit targets. We're talking about targets, you know. That's one of the three pillars. And so we are probably, because we don't understand positional chess as good as we should, but we do understand the principle of targets. That's what we were working on, right? And then, like a ninny, I went to, okay, I went to bishop a5, then he went to, I went to knight e4. Yeah, I went to knight e4, and there was a question mark on the computer. It said that was not the right move either. And then he came to knight g5. Now, he's willing to swap the knights. And so I said, okay, let's swap the knights. I will swap the knights, and then the bishop takes the knight. His bishop is over here by my king side. Both of our bishops are over here on the side at this point. My bishops are horrible compared to his. He has a much more active field here, and I began to notice that. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I still don't have my rook and my bishop developed. What am I doing? Right? I mean, we are into move 22, and I'm still not fully developed, and Boris has all his pieces out, and that's making the difference. If I only would have taken that bishop with the knight when I had the chance, right? Yeah. Oh, man. And I went to f6. And technically, yes, bishop e6 was better. One, I was hitting a target. And I saw that. I saw the target. But I said, he'll just bump it up. But I should have, I should have brought my bishop out to bring my rook out, but I'm still pushing pawns. I'm reacting to Boris a little bit too much, right? Then he goes, bishop b3, check. And I go, oh, gosh, that is check. So I went to king h8. He came back up to bishop f4. I went to bishop f5, so I'm finally getting my bishop out so that I can finally finish developing way too late. I should have developed a lot sooner than that. And he takes my pawn. He's got a target. He acquires the target. Dang him. I went to d8, however, and I told him, Boris, you lined up your bishop and knight. There's a tactic here, so I threw a tactic at him. I get one or the other. Now, I thought I was playing decent. I, I've had a tactic or two in here, and I had another tactic here. The computer told me that was an error. I should have taken the knight. Yeah. I had the target. I just didn't take it because I was more interested in tactics. So I did a tactic. Because I'm studying tactics, I'm trying to sharpen my eye on tactics. The only way is to practice, right? Yeah. Knight came to e5. And at this point, I figured I really had him. And I did the worst blunder of the game. I took the bishop with the rook. I should have taken the knight with the pawn. I was, I was so excited to have the tactic that I was mesmerized in getting one of his pieces. In tactics, you want to stop and look at every single piece and what they can do. And that is what I quit doing once I got that tactic. I said, I was telling myself, basically, I'm doing better tactics in this game, so I'm going to win. And that's the lesson that I want to drive home to you of not 
to think that way. Because now, he's got me. <laughs> this just floored me. Go ahead and laugh, Boris. Yeah. <laughs> this just, I go, oh my gosh. Wow, what a dumb move I made, right? So I come to King G8, and I'm thinking, okay, I can I can still do this. I can I can I can get his knight, or I can come over and uh, double up my rooks and come and get his king. And he goes, knight takes d6, check, and I go. A discovered check of the bishop. And I knew then that I was had. I thought, oh crap, I am really in trouble here. So I moved my king out, and of course, he properly took the bishop. And now, he's getting me. This is serious. I am in trouble. So I immediately hop on rook d8, get in the file. Boris went to a3, pushing that stupid pawn. So I went to g6, hitting a target, get rid of that stupid knight. It's ruined me. That knight ruined my game. And Boris came to here, knight h6. I said, all right, I'm going to come to bishop d2, hit a target, and hit the knight. Fork with another tactic. I had more tactics in this game than any other game I've ever played. So I was, I was feeling really, really good about myself, thinking I'm going to win because for whatever reason, I'm sharper at tactics in this game than Boris is. There's been games where he has had better tactics. In this game, I have the better tactics. What a great fork. Yeah, this has happened. So Rook came to c7. Blam, seventh rank, and Boris told me in the comments, he said, you know, I never even knew about rooks on open files and seventh ranks until I started watching your stuff. I said, yeah, thanks for using them against me. And he said, yes, you're very welcome. <laughs> so nice use of the file, and now he's going to wipe out my pawns. However, I did catch up in pieces again. And then he went to rook f7 check, a beautiful use of his coordination with his rook and his bishop. And I went king to e8, and then Boris went rook takes h7. So now he has the majority of pawns for an end game, and he's threatening my bishop. I went to bishop f8, and the computer said bishop c1 was the better move. So I did not do that one right. I came to f8 and then he went to a4. And it, it was at this point that we agreed to a draw. So my takeaway lesson of this game is this. I had four really good tactics in this game. Boris had at least three really good tactics in this game. As I was doing tactics, I relaxed mentally. And as Boris was getting tactic after tactic after tactic thrown at him, whether it was from my knight, my bishop, my rook, he was thinking harder and trying harder. He had a better mental toughness than I did. And that gained him the half a point. In my opinion, Boris won the moral victory in getting that draw. I didn't. I should have had the game. I felt I did. And then it slipped away just like that. Because I thought I was winning. And so I quit looking 
at every piece and what it can do, and I quit worrying so much about the position, and therefore I lost the full point. I only got half the point. Boris saved the loss. And for that, I am dang proud of you, dude. <laughs> that was a great game for us for those reasons. Yes, there's a lot of mistakes in here. There's quite a few blunders, mistakes, more mistakes and inaccuracies than blunders. But no, we didn't play Grandmaster Chess. It's from your losses that you can learn the most from your chess and your draws, I suppose. Wins are fun to crow about, but it is the losses that make you stop and think, wait a minute, what can I do better? Here's my takeaway, and here's what I'm telling you. With tactics, always pay attention to every single piece on the board. Every move. That is where I failed. So, there's your lesson, there's your video. Thanks for watching Backyard Professor Chess videos. Come and join us in Wychus. We are having a ball in our club. We are finding old uh, chess documentaries. <laughs> we are finding games. We are having spectacular fun with various different kinds of games that we're exploring and analyzing. And yes, I've got several of those games that I will show. This is one of them. I promised Boris that I would show him this game because I was so razzle-dazzled with the way he caught up to me that I was just laughing like crazy. I, I, was just, I was stunned, and I was laughing, and I was telling him, dude, you are incredible right now, and he was, and it really got him excited, and he deserves the accolades for getting that draw. So there's your accolades, man. Well deserved. So, be good, do well, have fun. Thanks for coming over. On the video, that is. And we will see you guys in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.